In this presentation what we're going to do is we're going to have a sort of overview exercise for a regression model, linear regression model. And the data set we're going to use is called the NT cars data set. It's an inbuilt data set in R. And first off what we'll have uh, a look at is we'll have an inspection of the data set there and we'll use the tail command to bring up the last six cases in the data set. So there we have them there. There's 32 cases or 35 cases. I can't remember. Anyway, we have the last six cases there. We have miles per gallon, cylinder, DISP, displacement or something like that, HP and so on. Now, so we're going to use this data set to fit a, a regression model of one variable on another. So what I'm going to do actually is not particularly an informative model from any engineering point of view, but just nice and simple and one that a beginner can uh, work with. So simple linear regression exercise. In this exercise, fit a simple linear model. So that's one predictor variable and one response variable, or independent variable and dependent variable, or explanatory variable and response variable. Anyway, weight is WT, weight is the independent variable, or the predictor variable. And miles per gallon, MPG, is the response variable, or dependent variable. And we're going to call this model fit1, OK? So first off, let's attach the data set, MT cars. That's a data frame, and we're going to attach it. That means we can use all the variables and access all the columns directly without having to write everything out bit by bit. Uh, so essentially, just the point of attach is it just saves a lot of typing. Now, the command for fitting a linear model is simply LM. And we have the response variable, the dependent variable, miles per gallon. And that's explained, which is this tilde symbol here. So that's uh, that's like a wiggly, squiggly hyphen. And if you're looking for that on your keyboard, well, my keyboard, it is just on the uh, right-hand side of the keyboard, just beside the return key. And it's on the same key as the... Uh, hash symbol, the one you use for commenting. So it's that symbol there. So uh, let's fit that model there. LM, miles per gallon, explained by weight. So if we just type in fit1, this is what we would get. This is the output we would get. Um, LM uh, formula is miles per gallon, explained by weight. Those are the regression uh, coefficients there, intercept and slope. And the reg for other regression coefficients, or other regression models where you have more explanatory variables, you have more there. Let's go down here, and what we do here is actually look at a summary of FIT1. This is always a very useful sort of exercise to look at the summary. So I'm just going to scroll down here now. There we go. Summary of FIT1. Well, there's the call again. It's just a sort of a specification of the um, model that we've used. Here's some information about the residuals. Very important um, for other types of exercises. Um, I'm not going to look at it here, but actually residuals are a very interesting part of looking at a model. And so, interesting, but I'm going to sort of skip over that and save that for another video. The coefficients, those are our regression coefficients there again. That's the intercept and slope coefficients. That's the intercept there, doesn't have a name. But the slope uh, for the weight uh, uh, variable, that's it there. Now these are the test statistics, standard errors, and p-values for the each of the coefficients. So these are essentially uh, how we would perform a test of significance for how important, or how significant our estimates are and so essentially we're looking at the p-value here at the end okay and uh, those values there and we'll interpret them but as a sort of uh, a little uh, guide essentially the more asterisks there the more important the more significant the um, estimate so lots of asterisks there three for each essentially these are very um, significant values. Okay, 
There's a little bit more information there about the, the f model fit, residual standard error, multiple R squared, adjusted R squared, and the F statistic. Now these are actually quite important, and they're actually so important that they are not even going to attempt to uh, cover them in a video like this. This is actually really interesting stuff if you are new to linear regression and statistics. These are really interesting things, uh, but for the sake of brevity I'm just going to leave it there and move on. Now what I'm going to do is actually go on to a multiple linear regression model. Um, I'm going to detach that there just to sort of, I have attached it earlier and detach it just to sort of, we close the book, we sort of finish the exercise. So now we're going to start up again and it just so happens I'm going to use the same data set again so I'm just going to reattach it. That's just a sort of good habit of keeping your workspace tidy, you know, just put something away when you're finished with it. So this is a multiple linear regression uh, um, exercise. What we're going to do here is we're going to have two independent variables and we're going to have uh, one response variable, which is the same response variable as we had the last time. It is miles per gallon. Essentially what we're just going to do is use two um, independent variables. Okay, weight and cylinder. So essentially what we're going to do to specify the second independent variable, we have weight plus cylinder. Okay, weight plus cylinder. So these are the two independent variables we're going to use, predictor variables we're going to use to predict miles per gallon. And again we have that tilde symbol. Now I'm going to sort of go through this much quicker. Essentially what we have here is the call and there we have the regression of, uh, coefficients once again we have the summary of the fit and uh, this is very similar to the last one you just notice that rather than having two uh, rows for the estimates and the corresponding p-values and stuff like that we have three we have the intercept and the regression coefficients you could informally call them slopes, but that's not exactly a good idea anymore for three-dimensional case. The slope is only for simple linear regression, really. So we just call it, these are our regression coefficients, and what we have here is the standard error t-value and p-value of the coefficients, and just a little a few asterisks there, just to sort of say, are these coefficients significant? And it turns out they are. Now, so go, so far so good. So essentially all that exercise, the whole point of that exercise is how do we do multiple linear regression plus, plus sign the next independent variable. Okay. Now, um, what I'm going to do actually go and do now is exercise three. And in this exercise, we are going to compute the intervals, the confidence intervals for the regression estimates. And what I'm going to do is actually, I'm just going to use, I have two models uh, fitted. They are two objects in my R environment, fit one and fit two. I'm just going to look at fit two only, just for the sake of brevity. Now I want to compute 95% confidence intervals for the um, regression uh, coefficients that we have determined. Uh, confidence interval, so how do we do that? Confint, confidence interval, and specify the model. The model is fit2. So as well as having the... Um, so essentially what we have here is the regression, um, the 95% the, the confidence interval for each of the regression coefficients for the for the model the, the slope and the two independent or the sorry the intercept and the inter in, uh, independent variables so they would sort of I'm just going to scroll back up here for a second they would sort of uh, correspond to they would sort of be have a correspondence with each of these three values up here for example this intercept uh, 36.179 and 43 point one nine three eight that is the point estimate and this is the corresponding interval estimate. So, uh, just as a remark, it would actually be nice if we had the intercept 
are the, the point estimate in between them. That's just a matter of preference for me. You can put them in there, you can sort of reconfigure your output if you want. I'm just going to leave it. Now, the default setting is 95%. Suppose I want a 99% confidence interval. What will I do there? I just specify confidence level, conf.level equals 0.99, and that will give me the uh, corresponding values there. Now, what has happened there is I think I have a slight typo there somewhere. Anyway, sorry, these are I think these values are actually wrong or something like that. But essentially that's how you do it. You just get slightly different values. Now, uh conf dot level is uh not point nine nine. That's how you just specify a different confidence level from ninety five percent. Now, what we're going to do here is next is we're going to uh, compute the Ikake information criterion for both of the models. So, essentially, which of the two models is the better fit? Which explains the response variable better? And essentially, the model with the lowest AIC value, Ikake information criterion, the one with the lowest value is considered the best model. Well, that's not such a straightforward matter. There's, you can actually read up on this more on Wikipedia or something like that and find that there's actually much more to it than that. But essentially how you will go about doing it is to just specify the name of the um, model, the fitted model, fit1 and fit2, and the command is capital AIC, all capitals, capital A, capital I, capital C, simple as that. So we get a value here, 166, fit2 is 156. So essentially what that tells me is that of the two models, um, fit 2 is preferable. Now just let's be clear about something. It doesn't tell me that fit 2 is bad or good. It just tell, tells me it's better of the two we have. Also, just as a remark, I think within uh, if the difference between mo mo models is just 2 or something like that, I don't think you consider that a significant difference at all. You can ignore. It has to be greater than 2 for it to be important difference. Now, Let's move on from that and try and get this whoops, uh, finished up, because we've just been here a while. How do you compute the ANOVA tables? Well, again, what I'm going to do is actually talk about how to compute and, uh, what ANOVA tables are another time, but just for the sake of brevity, how do you uh, calculate them? Simply ANOVA. Now, essentially, it's just a sort of... Uh, our remark is the about ANOVA is just does the model fit the data at all well? And that's what how you might interpret it. So ANOVA just fit na uh, give the name of the fitted model. Okay, we'll leave it there. Thirteen minutes.